In this video, we're gonna learn how to get this beautiful splatter or splash effect using just brushes, blend modes, and masking. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Photoshop and if you want to follow along using this photo, make sure you download that. Links are in the description. And the first thing that you need to do is download the brushes because the brushes are very essential for this tutorial. So I've put some links. Make sure you download the brushes. By the way, just wanted to let you know that my favorite source for free brushes is BrushEasy.com. Make sure you visit that website. It has all sorts of brushes. If you want watercolor brushes, just type watercolor and they will show bundles of free brushes. And if you want spray brushes, they have everything. They also have some premium brushes, but the free content is more than the premium. So make sure you check that out. Okay. So the first thing that we need to do is to load the brushes. How to load the brushes? Pretty simple. Select the brush tool and then you using this drop down key, click on this gear icon and then go to load brushes and load the brushes that I've given you. I've given you maybe the one and the 14. So let's go ahead and load the first one, 14th one and the fifth one. Say so slowly, slowly load every brushes that you want. So I just loaded the 14th brush. It's the number 14. So as you can see, the bottom most are the ones that have been loaded. Also, let's go ahead and load some more. I'll load the one load and it loads the brushes right at the bottom. I've given you a variety of options. You might not use all of them, but those are some pretty nice brushes. So let's go ahead and load some more. So load, let's go ahead and load the fifth one and maybe we'll load the seventh one too. Okay. So slowly, slowly load all of them and let's go ahead and load the seventh one. So load brushes, seventh one, click OK. Click load, by the way, and it loads the brushes. Now, all you have to do, make a copy of the background layer. Brush is done. Make a copy of the background layer. Okay. Now, we need to make a selection of just the subject. This can be done using the select and mask, and also you can use the quick selection tool, whatever you have. If you're using an older version of Photoshop, you can directly use the quick selection tool, but I prefer the uh, select and mask because that's more advanced. So select any selection tool and click on select and mask. Now this opens up a whole new dialog box just for making the selection. So since first we're going to keep the background white and then we can put the uh, subject in any background we want. So we'll choose view on white. Now if the opacity is 100, it will show white and everything that you have selected. Now since we haven't selected anything, it shows just white. If the opacity is zero, it will show everything irrespective of whatever you have selected. Okay, so let's keep the opacity somewhere around 63 and that's fine. And let's start selecting the subject using the quick selection tool. So this one is the quick selection tool in this and let's go ahead and just start painting over the subject and that's pretty much all you have to do. So simply paint. Okay, be really careful. Let's zoom in quite a bit and make the brush a little smaller and paint over her hand. There we go. The more accurate you are, the better. Select a little of her hair, just like that. That's a good selection. Now, if you want to refine the selection, just like hair, if you want to edit that, those areas, you can choose this tool. This tool is called the Fine Edge tool, and you can just paint over the edges, just like that, and it kind of refines the edge for you, okay? So now, if we go ahead and increase the opacity to say, 100, it will show you the areas that you have selected, just the areas that you have selected. The opacity is zero, it will show you everything. Now let's keep the opacity somewhere around this so that we can select the areas that have been missed. Okay. So just like this, a little bit of the hair. You don't have to be super perfect here because you'll see what I mean later. Okay. And that's pretty much done. And once you're satisfied, all you have to do Come down, scroll down, output to, make sure you have selection selected. Also, you can choose a new layer, okay? So I, I want selection and click OK. So once you have the selection, all you have to do, press Ctrl Command J, this puts the subject on its own layer. And that's why we said you can also select new layer if you want to. Now, all you have to do, create a mask for both of these layers, okay? Let's go ahead and create a mask. Click on this button and select this one. And for this one, create a negative mask. How to create a negative mask? Press and hold alter option 
and click on the mask button, negative mask. Now, let's create a white solid color adjustment layer. Solid color, select the background layer and then create that so that we have that layer between layer one and the background. So now we have this. So come to the mask of the layer, which is at the top, the topmost layer with just the subject. Then select the brush. Now it's time for us to have some fun. Select the brush and choose one of the spray brushes, just like this one, or maybe um, choose the one you like. It's so difficult to choose. There are so many amazing brushes. Okay, so let's go ahead and choose this one. And I'm gonna rub off a certain area from here, okay? So select the mask, make sure the foreground color is black, make the brush a little bigger, and we're gonna rub certain area just like that. Wow, now it looks like spray there. Make it a little bigger, and just like this. Now it looks nice. Make it a little smaller. There we go. Yeah, it looks beautiful. Now, let's go ahead and rub off some extra more areas right from here. So let's choose some other brush. Maybe we'll go ahead and choose. There are lots of brushes to choose from. This one, okay, so make it a little bigger. Also, if you wanna rotate the brush, you can do that. Go to Windows, Brush, and using this thing, you can just rotate the brush if you want to. So kinda, if you wanna just make it a little bigger, just kinda rotate it just a bit. It looks nice. That looks pretty good. Okay, and you can do a little here too. That's kind of too much. Yeah, that looks great. Close it, and you can choose some other brush if you want. Maybe I'll go with this one. And this time, uh, let's just, you can even flip the brush if you want. You can go to Windows, Brush, and you can even flip it. Like Flip X, kind of flips the brush. Yeah, paint in several areas. It's kind of too much. Just like that, now it looks nice. Also, you can try some other brushes. I've given you tons of them, okay? And I've not made it, brusheasy.com has it, but you get the idea, right? So this one, let's try some new stuff with this. A little bit to the left, just a little bit. Now, that's pretty good, and I think that's enough. Okay, let's go ahead and close it. Now, come to this mask, of layer one, and this time make sure the foreground color is what? White, okay? And choose a brush you like. This time I'll choose, say, there are tons of brushes. Okay, and I'll make it a little bigger, zoom out a bit, and I'll rotate that, I would like to rotate that. Let's keep it open. And this way, it looks fine, make it a little bigger, and there we go, wow! Have a look how beautiful this looks now. You can have a scan and no. That was good. Now let's change brushes. Let's select say, let's select say this one. And we can paint a little bit here. Just a little bit. Just a bit here maybe. With no, I kind of. And let's try some other brushes. This one, a little bit here, near the hair, just like this. Just like this. And that's pretty much it. Now it's pretty much ready. If you want to keep it at that, keep it at that. But we'll take it a step further, okay? So if you want to place it on a paper or kind of a texture, you can add some filters to it, okay? So select layer two, and we can add some filters. We can go to filter, filter gallery, and you can add any filter you want, brush strokes, artistic, anything that you want. And uh, I've just already added one. I've added the grain filter. So if you wanna see how I added that, you can select the grain under the texture, select the grain and choose speckle, okay? And depending upon your image, you can adjust the values of intensity, kinda like more intensity and contrast, okay? And once you're satisfied, click okay. And there you have it, you have added that kind of, uh, of an effect. Now, let's go ahead and add some backgrounds. To add some backgrounds, first create a merged copy. So to create a merged copy, just turn off the white and the background layer so that we have a transparent background. Create a new layer and press Control, Alt, Shift and E. If you're using a Mac, it would be Command, Option, Shift and E. So Control, Alt, Shift, E. Now this puts everything on its own layer with a transparent background. So we don't have to worry about any of that now. So 
let's create a new layer and uh, let's import this image so I'm using the pixels Photoshop plugin just click on this and that will import it as a layer you can also import it by going to file open or file place embedded now once you have that imported just place this below layer 3 and just resize that by the way I press controller command T and then resize that hit enter there we go now of course you have to change the blend mode to something let's try and multiply and now look how realistic this looks but multiply gets you all the shadows have a look it gets you all the shadows but it doesn't get you the highlights so how about making a copy of it and placing it above this layer and changing the blend mode to screen because screen brightens stuff multiply darkens stuff now of course you need to do some adjustments here what adjustments blend if so double click on the on the right hand side of the layer and this opens up the layer style dialog box now take the slider of this layer from left to right just like that and to make it a little smoother press and hold alter option click on it and break it just like that and give it a little texture wow you can even try overlay if you want to let's see how overlay looks overlay also looks nice so choose what you want if you want it to look a little glossy choose screen if you want it to look a little more textury matte finish choose overlay I would choose overlay and there we go done you can even move the image if you want so select the photo and if you don't like the placement kind of thing you can move it and you know the rest also let's try one more background okay let's try one more background so this time we're gonna try this one let's click on that and this is kind of wide this is not vertical so let's see how we fit this image into this it's gonna be fun and not every time one blend mode will work you have to play with it you have to play with blend if you have to play with blend modes and guess what if you have watched my tutorial on blend modes in depth you'll be able to figure out which blend mode to use so if you have, haven't watched it watch it out right here okay so this time let's go ahead and delete the other delete the old one delete this one and and let's keep this just below this okay and change back the blend mode to normal there we go now let's go ahead and adjust this make it a little bigger just like this it's looking great yeah this is looking fine I'm gonna keep it just like that and guess what let's increase the crop press C and clear the crop just clear it out and just go ahead and just just increase the crop a little bit just a little bit up to this point this looks fine okay once you're satisfied click okay now let's see which blend mode looks good into this so I think how about overlay let's try overlay with this layer, layer 3 overlay nah kind of nah I think blend modes let, let's keep it normal and try blend ifs okay so underlying layer from left to right let's try now this looks very nice this looks realistic click OK now if you want obviously you have to delete certain areas from this so create a mask and then turn it off if you want and just make a selection of it using the quick selection tool just make a selection of the tools and the pencils and stuff okay very simply make a selection of these stuff make a selection of the hand everything but the paper oops there we go just like that everything but the paper you get the idea and once you have made a selection I'm doing a really quick job guys maybe select the hand maybe the pencil too just like that and once you have made the selection all you have to do turn this on and fill this mask with black so make sure the foreground color is black and press alt backspace controller command D option delete if you're using a Mac and that basically deletes these areas and kind of looks really 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 nice so that's how you get the splatter or splash effect in Photoshop the basic concept is this just remember you have the layer with the subject you have the layer with just the subject and you have it stacked layer with everything layer with just the subject create a mask for both of those layer erase certain areas from the layer which has just the subject with the spray brush and add certain areas to the background with the layer 
with everything, with the subject and everything background. So that's pretty much it. It's all a game of masking. And then you can go ahead and add some blend modes to match it with the texture and add some more filters. And that's pretty much it. Hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe. And not just subscribe, ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss anything. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.